Yeah, so um, the community approach to working with data is the most exciting part for me. It's my favorite part of my job to learn from others and collaborate. And this project is the embodiment of that. We have to be realistic in how much time and resources we dedicate to it. It'll take a lot of effort, infrastructure, and need dedicated leadership coordination and buy-in to pull this off. So to describe my experience, um, it's just been so delightful to see the enthusiasm of different agencies about uh, joining our data sets and breaking down interagency silos. I've been at Bissell for 10 years, and I've seen the attitudes towards data go from being protective to being more open and collaborative. And that's really exciting for me. And I think it'll go a really long way towards improving services to participants. I'm also really glad to see that there's a lot of thought going into protecting the privacy of vulnerable people's data. It used to be that we just keep that door closed um, to protect confidentiality, but I think that this venture is forcing us to think proactively about information ethics and in the long run will result in better data governance. So to speak to Bissell Center specifically, we've been working on centralizing data and evaluating participant outcomes for the last 10 years. Um, we've come up with tools and approaches to data governance through our experience, and we've learned a lot from others along the way too. Uh, so I guess to summarize, we have our experience, our tools, our research partners, and our enthusiasm for evidence-based practice to contribute. Absolutely, and I feel very strongly about this. I'm so glad you asked. Um, engaging frontline staff. So they're the ones that know what reality looks like, what makes sense and what doesn't. They're also the ones that feed your database, the ones entering the data. And if there's a disconnect on the ground level, you're gonna have incomplete and inaccurate information. And oftentimes I've found that the real gems of what's going on on the ground level are tucked away in a bunch of weird and wonderful places and you have to go out and find them and see how they fit into the big picture or even if your big picture needs to be adjusted, uh, you know, and then you bring them into the fold and uh, you can show the good work that the organization is doing. And of course, like it goes without saying that high level strategic planning needs to happen but it does need to happen in tandem with frontline staff. They are the nerves of the organization and they'll tell you quickly if you're going in the right direction or not, if you make a space for that. Um, and of course it creates buy-in and gives you better data in the end. Um, I, I really like the, uh, the journey that the data maturity matrix has taken. It's, um, I remember in 2018, uh, I was helping a couple of folks from policy wise get it kind of um, off the ground. And like at that point, it was just like a spreadsheet with a few questions. <laughs> and, um, um, and then when I, I did the work with Jody, it was, yeah, it was this really, this is really holistic, really well thought out. Um, yeah, it's just this really amazing tool that made me take a step back and think about, you know, how far we've come or how far haven't we come? Like I kind of did this in 2018. I did it again just now. I think we still have some work to do. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, yeah, that was, that was really interesting. And, and also um, I have a, I have a contact at, at Nate that uh, does data governance. And we were just like coincidentally chatting about data maturity matrices as well. And I was, and she's been a consultant, uh, not necessarily in the nonprofit sector, uh, but she's been a consultant and like really knows her stuff. And she uh, does data maturity matrices 
for a lot of different organizations. And so um, like it, it's really, it's really cool to see that the nonprofit sector is actually buying into um, or, you know, policy wise is helping the nonprofit sector um, uh, get into these like kind of gold standard tools that are used in, you know, universities and like kind of big companies and corporations um, in order to improve their, uh, their, their business analytics. Um, and so it's, you know, it just seems like, I don't know, no, nonprofits are often just trying to make ends meet um, and they, you know, try and get by with, with the minimum. And it gives me a lot of hope that there's a lot of thought and planning and strategy and resourcing going into, um, going into making sure that, you know, our sector continues growing and not just is getting by.